How does it go? I guess you can't hear anything on the air, yeah? No. Okay. <laughs> That's all silence for you, it just occurred to me. <laughs> I'm here today to talk about a computer music project I've been working on. It's based on the Commodore 64, which is this computer here. It was launched in 1982 and it had groundbreaking sound and graphics. Uh, the sound was based on a MOS 6581 chip, uh, also known as SID, or Sound Interface Device, and this is this chip here. Um, and this was developed almost 40 years ago by a chap called Robert Yanez, who worked for Commodore Computer at the time. Uh, the chip has three voices in it, and you can control the waveforms, the frequency, and there's things like filters and modulation effects that can be controlled. And back in the 80s, I was one of those people who was programming in BASIC and controlling those registers and making crazy sounds with it. Um, so Robert Yanis, he wanted to make a synthesizer, a polyphonic synthesizer out of this chip, but because of the uh, time constraints of making uh, the Commodore 64 on time. Uh, it had to be finished a bit early and so it has some defects in terms of the envelopes and the amount of background noise it produces. Uh, so the synthesizer was never made, although Robert Yanis did go to make a new synthesizer company called Ensonic and was quite successful there for 20 years. Uh, so I thought I would try and make the polyphonic synthesizer that never happened and so uh, this is my attempt at it. Uh, this is the board that I made, uh, well there's six boards, they're all the same and they are, uh, I did the PCB layout and got that made in China and then had to hand assemble all of those units and uh, I've been going around um, getting a hold of uh, these SID music chips um, from eBay and uh, I'm sure some people might not be happy about me doing that but uh, they're in safe hands and one day they'll be sold back and available still for people to put into Commodore 64s. So, uh, but for now they're in this project here. Uh, so yeah, I made the circuit board and um, they stack on top of each other and the, there's a Raspberry Pi computer at the bottom and the Raspberry Pi uh, controls all of those chips, the address and data buses that control those chips. And um, I wrote the code in Python which uh, will um, control those chips. And then I have this large item here which is a MIDI keyboard. It's not a synthesizer, it's just a MIDI keyboard. It has a USB port here and the Raspberry Pi is actually powering this keyboard here. And whenever I press a key on this keyboard it sends a message to the Raspberry Pi and to the, my Python code which then um, will then control the SID uh, music chip. And then all of these sliders and controls and drum pads on this unit also can be uh, controlled. Whenever I move one of these it sends a message to the Raspberry Pi again. Uh, telling it something has changed and uh, those events then trigger various things to happen to the SID chips. So uh, I actually did two different kinds of synthesizer with this device. Uh, one is a more conventional synthesizer where these controls here can adjust various parameters of the sound and uh, for example the SID chip has these three voices and I can control each of those uh, voices individually, set the waveform, set the frequency for them. I can adjust the envelopes, I can adjust the filters and the modulation just with these knobs here. And uh, the second mode that I use is a, a kind of music playback mode where what I've done is I've taken the SID music files and I've um, run them through a, a Commodore 64 simulator and extracted all of the register pokes uh, that uh, control the SID chips and then I've timestamped them and stored them so I can play them back at will. I can adjust any of the voices or any of the frequencies or any of the speed and that sounds like this and because this is a polyphonic device I can play two at once or I can play them slightly out of time like that and then the conventional synthesizer sounds a bit more like a, what you might expect a conventional synthesizer sounds like or two notes and in fact I can play up to six notes on this device um, but uh, you, you notice the uh, sound quality getting worse as you have six SID chips or six Commodore 64s making background noise all, all at once. So uh, uh, now I'll show you a more deeper dive of how to use this to make sound and music.
OK, uh, the first demonstration, I'm going to show you this working as a more conventional synthesizer where you can control the oscillator frequencies, waveforms and the envelopes that adjust the volume over time of each note. So the first thing is just a basic triangle, which goes like this. And then we can switch on more voices like that. And this is a bit louder. And we can control the frequency of each of these. And then we can detune, which gives a kind of chorus effect. And also we can try changing some of the waveforms. So the sawtooth waveform, for example. And then if I add a bit of envelope to that, it can make a sort of string sound with it. And then a lot of people who used to program these used to use the pulse waveform because there's some modulation control you can do with the pulse waveform. So I'll show you that. So this is the pulse switch modulation. So this is the width of the pulse I can adjust here. And then I could also add a bit of uh, vibrato to this sound. And because it's my own synthesizer, I can go as high as I like with these settings. So I can also use that vibrato to adjust the modulation of the square wave. And that gives it a kind of moving effect as you play the notes. Okay, uh, next mode is I'll add some filters to it. As you can see, the filters on the SID chip are a little bit weak. Uh, okay, so uh, one of the greatest features of this is the sync mode. So I'll switch the filter off. And then I need to control that. And you can go really crazy with these parameters. If you send that right up to there and I do this one here, it makes a really crazy sound. And there's some sort of, uh, you might recognize that kind of aliasing effect. It was quite popular in a lot of games. That sound there. Okay, uh, next things, I can also uh, adjust the, uh, the filter over time. It might not work so well with this sound. I'll try. Um. So that's a way of making a pulse sound sound a bit like a horn. Okay, uh, next thing I'm going to show you is arpeggiators. So I'm going to start off with the basic waveform again. And then there's two types of arpeggiator I've got here. The first involves um, playing notes. So it will sound like this.
And then what was popular on Commodore 64s was to actually just modulate uh, one oscillator. So that sounds like this. So what I can do is say, for example, add that sync function back in again. And then play that on some notes. Something more complicated. Oh, by the way, I've got pitch shifting working. Okay, so um, there's plenty of other little things I can do with this, but they take a bit of setup and a bit of tuning to get right here. So I'm going to go straight on to the, uh, the music playback mode instead. So if I press this button, just actually switch off some things. Uh, this is the whiz ball sound. So the beginning of the whiz ball game sounded like that, but I can play it in chords. And I'll go through some of the sounds. Hopefully you can recognize some of them. Uh, this is the bass line in the whiz ball. Another whiz ball sound. Uh, some basic uh, percussion sounds. I think that was probably the note there, the G. Uh, popping noises. Uh, I've also got uh, some other songs here. This is Bad Guy. <laughs> I think it's probably this note. So I can change the pitch of the whole song. I'll put the bass in alone. And then maybe I can play something else on the upper side of the keyboard. If I put that in dual mode. Okay, next sound. So that's from um, Monty on the Run. I have to put it on the upper side of the keyboard as well, one second. So that's Mega, 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 Mega Apocalypse. Mega Apocalypse. Um, and this is some arpeggio sound from it. This is Monty on the run. Uh, this is the, um, there's a game called Commando and the music was by Rob Hubbard and he had this unusual sort of crashing metal sound which sounds a bit like this. Uh, this is another sound from that game. Uh, this is one of the most popular lead the, One of the most popular songs is uh, a, a song called Cybernoid by uh, Jerome Tell. And uh, this sounds like this. I'll show you one last one, which is uh, the game called Thrust. And I think this is a, um, a, a rhythm line from it as well. Oh, still got that old one on. OK, 
right, that's the end of my demo. Uh, you can read more about it in the blog. I'll be uh, putting the code up on GitHub and also I'll put things like the schematics onto uh, the GitHub as well so you can have a look at how this, the board works as well. Um, so uh, I hope to see other projects like that from other people. Um, maybe a different uh, games console or computer uh, that has a different music chip and it would be great if someone else could make a similar project to this. Okay, bye. Yeah, I uh, I didn't buy at the end. Seems a bit weird, anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>